Okay, so today's case is that of Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher is an individual who on April 10th, 2001, committed a triple murder and then disguised it to look like an accident or to cover the murders. More probable. Um, very interesting case in which I've got to read the police reports. What is most interesting about this case is that Robert Fisher is presumably still out there. And we'll get into all the speculation and the theories and thus forth as we go forward. Uh, so on April 10th, 2001, around 8.40 a.m., there was a huge explosion at their home at 2223 North 74th Place in Scottsdale, Arizona. As you can see by this picture, it is like a, it's a cul-de-sac, a lot of houses around. Um, eventually, when police and fire get there, they find out that it is occupied by a family, the Fishers, Robert, who is age 41, I believe, Mary, who is 38, Brittany, 12, and Bobby, the youngest, at age 10. Around 1140, they start finding remains, and they found the charred remains of three individuals. Of course, they don't really know who they are at this point in time, because um, the bodies are... are charred pretty badly beyond recognition at least uh, a physical face-to-face -face. however the one body was seen to have a wedding ring on so they assumed that it was probably a female and probably Mary they would later confirm that the three individuals that were found in this fire and explosion was of course Mary Brittany and Bobby what is the problem with this somebody's missing and it's the husband. Through interviews, and this is where the most important aspect of this case lies, is interviews with surrounding neighbors, teachers, family members. Very, very crucial. More crucial than victimology in this case. They come to learn that the family was church going people um, although Robert Fisher being missing was obviously a problem neighbors were to tell police that hey there is and this is the crazy thing about having neighbors you know I'm glad I live in the woods in a way I only have one neighbor and thank goodness I get along with them but if I didn't, I mean, they can, neighbors can supply everything. Neighbors said, hey, there should be two vehicles there, and there is only one. The two vehicles being a Ram truck, which belonged to Robert Fisher, and a SUV, I believe it was a Toyota, that belonged to the wife, which is not uncommon, but it was good that the neighbors pointed this stuff out. The truck which is Roberts was there and where it is parked as you can see here is very important as well it's in the carport um, but the wife's SUV is gone and according to almost everybody's account he barely drove that understandable think about your situation maybe with your loved one and if you each have a vehicle rarely do you drive each other's vehicle yet her car was gone. You can't automatically jump to conclusion that Robert Fisher um, set this fire or did the explosion and then disappeared. There's a lot of legwork that needs to be done and fortunately the police department did that. What they came to determine and it, from the police reports it looked like it was determined on scene and not at the medical examiner's office is that although the bodies were charred, 
they could see that the three victims inside had their throats cut. So now, Robert Fisher and the missing SUV moves up a notch in your who's done it, what's going on scenario. So, arson investigators determine, okay, what caused the fire? We see that the three victims had their throats slashed. That more than likely killed them. That's what they think then. When they do the autopsy later on, they find no suit in the lungs. And what does that tell you? It means they weren't breathing when the fire occurred. So they were, they were dead. And more than likely, they died through the throats being slashed. Now, I had a case just like that one time where uh, a, a young female perished in the fire and the family thought that she was murdered because the guy made it out, although he had third-degree burns and spent many weeks uh, in the burn unit. There was no suit in, you know, in her lungs, or that's what they assumed. That's what they assumed that we were going to find. However, when the autopsy was done, there was um, a high level, almost three times the amount of carbon monoxide in her lungs, which means she was breathing. And he didn't kill her and set the fire. However, in this case, it appears to be the direct opposite. So, that's the scenario of which we have. We have an explosion. We have three victims, all three are family members, and the, the patriarch of that family is gone, and a vehicle is missing. Right off the bat, could he have been kidnapped and taken? Yes, you know, but that's down, that's down the rung of the ladder, when you, especially when you start looking at his background, which is crucial in determining what happened. As I said before, arson investigators got there. They determined that there was natural gas line going into the house. That was hooked into the furnace, which was supplying the house with heat. Well, that had been undone. And there had been a candle placed in the room. So what that means is eventually, when that gas gets to a big enough uh, amount that's filling that air inside the house and it hits that flame you're going to get the explosion now now if Robert Fisher did this and let's make no mistake about it he did but I'm playing devil's advocate to follow along in this investigation how did he know to do this I won't fear of 